episode of Off The Script, number 168, part number one, for your Friday, May 5th, 2017! I got more nudes! Wish I didn't, but, uh, apparently, the women in WWE can't fucking help themselves. Charlotte, the latest victim of WWE's locker room hack. Nudes leaked on Thursday morning. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding? This guy thinks he's a fucking boss. This fucking asshole of you. <laughs> hey, nudes, as long as you don't see Samoa Joe and his chicken sandwiches. And, uh, Dumpling Laura. Get the fuck out of here, you fucking asshole. Bad enough we gotta see you in your fucking, uh, cavity-ridden teeth on Monday Night Raw. Thinks who he is. He thinks he's a fucking boss. What else do we got on this fucking show here tonight, man? Ah, here we go. Brock Lesnar. Backstage news on his Universal title run. Also, future opponents. We already went over this, but there's more news regarding Brock Lesnar's future opponents for the Universal Championship. Also, Sean Waltman, X-Pac, arrested at LAX. More details on his arrest and what really happened with the former member of D-Generation X. Also, ratings report for Raw and SmackDown. Raw suffered the lowest ratings of the year. Why is that and what is my take on it? We'll talk about it right here on Off The Script. Also, Undertaker, update on his surgery. Undertaker finally getting repaired after a 25-year career in WWE. Also, Titus O'Neil, like a fucking asshole, tweets and deletes photo of Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman together. How's that shoulder holding up, Roman? How's that torn rotator cuff, Strowman? Huh? What a bunch of fucking retards. It's like he left the chicken in the fucking oven for an extra 20 minutes and burnt the shit out of it. Dummy, Titus O'Neil. Anyway, all that plus so much more, including a loot crate, slam crate, unboxing, right here on the number one fucking podcast, right here on YouTube.com. This is Off The Script. J.D. Get off my fucking TV and save me the misery and all you fucking goons. Just grab a cold beer. The man of the hour is finally here. JD from New York, 206. It's time for off the script. JD. What is going on, guys? JD from New York here. Thank you so much for tuning back into the channel today. Episode 168, part number one of Off The Script. The number one fucking podcast right here on YouTube.com. Available also on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher Radio, Audio Boom, and Google Play Music. Whichever website or platform that you prefer more than likely off the script will be there the number one and most important of course is itunes if you guys do listen on itunes i would love to get off the script regularly in the rankings and how we do that is through comments through subscriptions and through rankings and ratings so if you guys want to go on there if you do listen to it Leave me a comment. Let me know what you love about the show. Let me know if you hate the fucking show and whatever. Just leave me a fucking rating. Whatever. Comments accumulate and they all go to the search engine optimization. The ratings. Leave us a five-star rating if you do indeed enjoy the show on iTunes. And also, please hit that subscribe button if you're over there. Because when you're sleeping in the middle of the night, you know, and, and you don't realize that Off the Script is, uh, is uploaded on iTunes, you'll get a notification delivered right to your device saying, Listen, 
off the script and JD just uploaded another episode. Listen to me now. It's right there waiting for you, automatically downloaded right to your device. So please make sure you guys go and do that if you do indeed listen to off the script on your mobile device or iPad, Android, whatever you guys are using. Yesterday, yesterday was a very emotional day for me, man. Um, My grandpa, as you guys know, passed away in 2014, February 3rd, to be exact. Um, And yesterday was his birthday. So it was his third birthday since his passing. And being that I have uh, a lot more free time on my hands, I took the time out of my day to go to his gravesite, and I spent a little bit of time with him, you know, just talking to him for a little bit, and just telling him what's going on with the family, and how much we miss him, how much my mom talks about him all the time, how much my mom and my family miss him, how it's not the same, that he's not with us anymore, you know, I explained to him what's going on with me and my personal situation. And I just hope that he's looking down on me and he and he just guides my, you know, guides me and, and, and my direction down the right path, man. Um, I've always looked up to my grandpa. He was always somebody that was a straight shooter, um, somebody that was just a model individual for for this world. He, he, he worked so hard and he provided for his family the, the best way, the absolute best way that he could. And he was just so loving to his grandkids and without him, it's just not the same, man. He, he was the glue that held our family together. And being that there's now a little family turmoil, it all stems from him passing away. And I know whatever's going on with my family now would not be happening if he was here. And I'm sure he's looking down disappointed in a lot of people. And uh, I just wanted to go wish him a happy birthday and that I think about him every day and that I miss him. And uh, it, it, was just, uh, it was just nice, man. The, the, where, where he is located, um, he, 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 he always wanted to not be buried. In the ground, he always had something against that. So uh, you know, he uh, was—he had his own spot on the wall, his own crypt, and it was just very beautiful, man. It's St. Raymond Cemetery here in the Bronx, and you know, I walked in, and you got beautiful statues of Mary and Jesus, and and very, you know, very peaceful with beautiful flowers, just you know, illuminating the entire environment, beautiful smell when you walk in there, they got beautiful fountains, very serene, very peaceful, it was a, it was a, it was a chilly day yesterday, but it was very beautiful, and it was very peaceful, so I stood there for about 15 minutes with him, and I just reflected on a lot of things, and it was just, it was just very nice, and I want to wish him a happy birthday, and I, like I said, I hope he's looking down on everybody, including me, and um, hopefully he knows of what's going on, and he sees that things end up right, man. That's all I want to have happen. Moving on from that, um, if you guys were not aware, this week, Mr. Justin Labar reached out to me and said, are you free on Tuesday? For you, man, I am free, bro. Do you even have to ask? So my buddy Justin reached out to me. He's got a great podcast on iTunes That's where I primarily want you to go because I want to get him up the rankings as well. All you got to do is look up Wrestling Reality on iTunes and you're going to see Justin Labar's podcast right there. Wrestling Reality with Justin Labar. He invited me on. We talked about Braun Strowman and does he have the Lesnar-esque feel to him? We talked about Sami Zayn. We talked about Dean Ambrose as the Intercontinental Champion. He asked me who is now currently off the Get Off My TV hit list. So I told him, You know, we went over great balls of fire because Vince McMahon loves his balls of fire. Justin actually renamed the the pay-per-view Great Great Grapefruits of Fire. Ridiculous name. I don't know why they just didn't bring back King of the Ring. It still boggles my mind. How are you going to have that in July and then you got the perfectly fucking positioned July spot for King of the Ring, right? I, I I don't understand that, man. I've always said... King of the Ring is the perfect, quintessential way 
to get us to SummerSlam. I just don't understand how WWE doesn't fathom that, you know? The winner of the King of the Ring, you make it a dual brand to pay-per-view. Four from Raw, four from SmackDown. And then the winner of that King of the Ring gets a world title shot for their respective brand. There you got one main event, man. You, you got to do no work. The winner of the King of the Ring is the number one contender against Randy Orton, AJ Styles, Brock Lesnar, whoever the fuck the champion is at that time, man. That's the way it should be. I don't understand why they don't do that, but uh, apparently uh, our balls are going to be on fire come July. Rumored Strowman versus Lesnar for the WWE Universal Championship. But straying away from the from the topic at hand, I don't I don't, I don't want to do that. Labar's podcast, we, we talked about it. I was a special guest. Great listen. He's got a great podcast. Uh, it's very easy to listen to, man. It really doesn't exceed an hour. And it gives you... The reality of everything that happened in the week, man, with WWE. So make sure you guys go and check them out. Justin Labar's Wrestling Reality Podcast. I am a special guest host on there this week talking with Labar. So make sure you guys go and check that out on iTunes and Google Play Music. Speaking of podcasts, Mr. Eric Bischoff. And I had another phone call this week. I really didn't make it known. Um, I left it to Joe this week because it was a dual call with Cronin and myself with Eric Bischoff. Going over the specifics again as we near the IRW Network launch. You guys can sign up free. IRWnetwork.com. Right now you can sign up for free up until June 1st. Make sure you guys go and do that. Because it's going to be the place, the destination for all your independent wrestling news, rumors, podcasts, and indie wrestling action. It's going to be a hub for everything, man. In the light of this YouTube ad bullshit, Eric Bischoff and his team is putting together a centralized location for everything concerning wrestling under one roof. It's like the Mall of America for wrestling. So make sure you guys go and check that out. IRWnetwork.com. We will be posting teasers on there soon, around the middle of the month. So we will be taking care of that. I have been contemplating how I'm going to expand off the script on there to make sure you guys get enough for your money. And the idea that I have right now, as far as that goes, I think I'm going to do off the script retro. That's one of the biggest things I'm going to do for off the script. I'm going to rewatch several old WWF, WWE pay-per-views in chronological order. And I'm going to review the storylines leading up to those specific matches and events. And I'm going to review those events. If that is something that interests you guys, please let me know down in the comments. Because right now that's uh, a work in progress. And I want to make sure you guys are on board with that. Obviously, there's going to be more. But that's going to be one of the main things that attract you to the IRW Network and my specific channel. So I want to make sure you guys are aware of that. I'm also thinking about moving the NXT and Lucha Underground reviews specifically over there because they really don't do well on YouTube. You know, the NXT reviews really do anywhere between four and 5,000 views. It's nothing. I think I might move that over there every Wednesday. We'll go over that and do Lucha under the same, under the same thing. And primarily, I'll do off the script like you see it now on YouTube and off the script extra and whatever else breaking news here. Uh, I'll do some top fives when I feel it, some top tens. So I'm trying to, you know, pretty much spread out the off the script brand everywhere. So that's my work in progress right now. Let me know what you guys think about all of that. And sign up for the IRW Network, irwnetwork.com, and sign up for free up until June 1st. Speaking of networks, I want to thank everybody for jumping on board my network, man, Patreon. You guys are fucking unbelievable. You guys kicked ass in April. Hopefully, we can do the same thing in May. These are your shout-outs right now for Patreon. If you guys want to jump on board the Patreon team, it's patreon.com slash JD from NY206. These are the members of Team JD that have pledged for May. Adam Lowry, $1. We got Jeffrey Thomas, $1. David Milleen, $10. $3 pledged by Jorge Soto. We got... um. 
One dollar pledged by Scott Anderson the second. One and uh, one dollar by Jose Melendez. We got Aaron Napier pledging one dollar. Jason Alpaw five dollars. Brett L seven fifty. We got Andy Perez pledging five dollars. We got David Barbieri five dollars. Uh, Jason Sampson two dollars. We got Otis Renfro. He upped his pledge from one to two dollars. We got Michael upping his pledge from five to six dollars, and we got Jacob Ridgely pledging one dollar. We got those fine people pledging so far for the month of May. If you guys want to jump on board, patreon.com slash JD from NY206. You guys are going to get early access to Off the Script. I do have to post the updated Discord chat link for you guys to be a part of that. We got 344 patrons right now. So I want to see 344 of you fucking crazy motherfuckers inside that Discord chat, man. Chatting amongst yourselves. A great fucking community for WWE Talk, man. So thank you guys so much for all of that. You guys are unbelievable. And I thank each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart. Other great ways to support this show, man, as you guys know, should be fucking ingrained in your head right now. Audible. Audible's offering you guys 30 days free to try their service out with one free audio book of your choice. Over 180,000 books to choose from, compatible with iPhone and Android. And if you guys end up canceling your subscription to Audible within the 30 days, you get to keep your audio book for free. That's audibletrial.com slash off the script. You guys are cashing in like crazy on the AJ Lee book, Crazy Is My Superpower, narrated by her for a full eight and a half hours, man. You guys are loving that. Also, the Daniel Bryan book seems to be a... Uh, a hot one as well. That's audibletrial.com slash off the script. And if you guys don't like the wrestling related content, I'm sure you'll find something on there, man. Thank you to Audible for sponsoring this podcast. And thank you guys for showing love to Audible Trial. Loot Crate. We are still sponsored by Loot Crate. I got an email from my representative, Eddie. So did Cronin. Um, we will not be receiving any more Slam Crate due to a lack of business on our end. Whatever the case may be. Who cares? I'm still sponsored by Loot Crate. I still get a kickback from everybody that signs up with Loot Crate. And all you got all you guys got to do is go to trylootcrate.com slash off the script. Our coupon code is still available. JD from NY. No matter what you guys decide to choose, no matter what subscription, you're going to save 10% off with that coupon code, man. So that's trylootcrate.com slash off the script. The script. And finally, Barber Shop Window. We are an official partner with Pro Wrestling Tees and Barber Shop Window. Shout out to those guys because they're fucking awesome. Barbershopwindow.com slash off the script for your t-shirts. $19.99. They ship worldwide no matter where you are. And if you guys do end up getting a t-shirt, easy way to get a retweet, man, is just tweet me with your t-shirt and I will retweet you guys on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter at JD from NY206. And hit that subscribe button down below with the bell for that notification to be notified of all my uploads throughout the week. Speaking of uploads, Raw, SmackDown Live, and NXT reviews all live on the channel right now. They are linked in the annotation that you see on the screen in front of you. Plus, payback review and results. If you guys missed that video, that is live on the channel as well. Moving on here, man. Quickly moving on through this first hour of Off the Script, which will probably probably be less than an hour. We got the Loot Crate unboxing and then the sub stories ready to go. I want to do this unboxing, man. Give me a second. We got this Loot Crate unboxing, man. This is a big fucking crate. This is actually the last crate for now. We're going to be unboxing because they cut Off the Script for their uh, program. Don't know why, but... Um, they're on the list, you know. I'm still sponsored by them, whatever the case may be. Uh, but this will indeed be the last unboxing for Loot Crate at this current time. So let's see what's in this thing, man. It's big. Uh, I'm hearing it's not that good, but we'll find out and, de and determine that for ourselves. Let's see what we got here, man. We got uh, the box here. Steve Austin's time has come. And when I get the shot, you are looking at the next WWE Champion, and that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold said so. We got a shirt in here, man. There seems to be a couple of cool things in here, man. Let's see. Ooh, what is this? Looks like the demon. 
Oh my god, man. Look at that. Finn Balor t-shirt. That is fucking sweet. Let me pull up my um my thing here so I could show you guys. There you go. That's fucking sweet, man. On the back. Finn Balor. Awesome, awesome, awesome shirt, man. That's going right with the collection. Love that, man. Uh, this is a great box. It really is, man. You get officially licensed WWE shit. And I don't know why they're cutting me, but it is what it is, man. You know, you guys seem to like these unboxings every week. I always get tweets. You know, I signed up for Luke Crate. I signed up for PW uh, Pro Wrestling Crate. I signed up for that wrestling club. Uh, yeah, I, I heard about you guys from JD. They're cutting me. I don't know what the fuck they want, but whatever, man. What do we got here? Got Stone Cold on the packaging. It's a collectible figurine. This apparently is uh, a rare exclusive for Loot Crate only. You're not going to find this anywhere else concerning WWE product. If I can open it. How the fuck do you open it? Let's see. It sounds like it's all fucking broken. Oh. Oh, that's got it. Comes with a stand too. Wow, they put it in. They put it in this fucking plastic. This is the exclusive Stone Cold figurine. I expected more from that, but it is what it is. He's got a fucking beer can in his hand, as you guys can see. That uh, there you go. He's got a beer can in his hand. Stone Cold figurine. It does come with a stand. Um, like a podium. And it comes with a... It comes with turnbuckles. So that's how it's set up. And you put them on there. Boom. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool, man. It comes with ropes, too. I'll, I'll set the ropes up uh, whenever, but... It comes with ropes. It's pretty cool, man. Um... I expected more from that, but it is what it is. Stone Cold figurine. This is a Loot Crate exclusive. WWE Slam Stars is a new collectible figure series created by fans for fans. The debut collection designed by Brian Beatty of the Creation Crib celebrates the iconic WWE superstars of the Attitude Era. This is one, the first one, Stone Cold Steve Austin, man. So there you go. Pretty cool stuff there. What do we got here, man? Let's see. This one is... Ooh... Who said this crate sucked, man? Who said this crate sucked? If this is what I think it is, I'm using this for a fucking cold beverage, man. Look at this shit. Oh my god, man. Masters of the mic. Look at that. We got two... Durable, thick, plastic cups. One WWE microphone on the cup. The other one's got fucking Enzo's microphone on there, man. That is fucking sweet. That's awesome. Cold beverages in here. Soon to come, man. That is fucking great. Awesome, awesome shit right there. Love that. I love that type of shit. I'm a sucker for, uh, for uh, collectible glasses. Masters of the mic here. We got a full-fledged mini magazine here. WWE Slam Crate exclusive Masters of the Mic. And then on the back, one of the best of all time, Stone Cold Steve Austin inside the book. It just goes over the people who are deemed masters of their craft. Roddy Piper, Ric Flair, Chris Jericho. Look at that. John Cena. We got uh, The Rock, of course. So, that's awesome, man. Just highlighting all the best on the microphone in WWE. That's pretty sweet there. Another one of these collectible pins. Of course, Universal Championship. Universal Championship right there, man. That's fucking sweet. As soon as I uh, get a bulletin board, those are going all on my bulletin board because I got a whole fucking bag of them. And then finally, we got, I believe, a poster here. We got a poster here. Let's see who's on the poster. This is the loot for the month. And then, obviously, one of the greatest of all time, we got The Rock. That's fucking sweet, bro. This was a great fucking crate, man. This was really a great fucking crate. Uh-oh. Uh, I have to show this because uh, there, there are a bunch of fucking thirsty motherfuckers out there. 
Yeah. There's your girl Alexa Bliss right there, man. Um, look at this. Outside the ring with Alexa Bliss. Fast facts on Alexa. What are you doing right now? Watching Netflix. What's your favorite song? So many, but anything Panic at the Disco and Bowling for Soup. Girl, all the bad guys want. Favorite lyric? I'm watching wrestling, trying to be a tough guy. Bowling for Soup. Favorite exercise in the gym? Spin class. Favorite guilty pleasure? Peanut butter. Favorite TV show or movie? Currently Friends and Daria. All-time favorite WWE superstar, Trish Stratus. Favorite all-time male wrestler, Macho Man, Randy Savage. Hidden talents? They're so hidden, I don't even know. And dream match? She says her dream match is against Alexa Bliss. So there you go, man. Fast facts on Alexa. I think I just throw that in there because everybody loves Alexa. And she's the, the talk of the town right now. But that is uh, WWE Slam Crate. If you guys are interested in that, man, you could use my unique link, trylootcrate.com slash off the script. Use the coupon code JD from NY for 10% off that very crate, man. Another one coming in another two months, bi-weekly or bi-monthly rather, and they are fucking awesome. I really love this crate. I thought they did a very, very good job this month with Slam Crate. Let me move all this shit out of the way, man. We got some sub stories to go over. Let's hit the sub stories for this week. If you guys want your stories read, please email me at JD from NY206 at yahoo.com. You guys can send in whatever you want. It could be fucking two lines, it could be a whole story, a novel, whatever the case may be, man. I am backed up on so many sub stories right now. We're going to run through a few of them, probably do three today. So, let's start off with this one, man. We're going to start off with Trey. Trey Evans. And he says, Hello, JD. My name is Trey. I'm from Allentown, Pennsylvania. Originally from Brooklyn. I'm 20 years old. I've heard about your videos. My friend recommended it. And I've been watching since mid-January. And I've enjoyed it ever since. I want to tell you about my story. I was born 87 weeks early. Wow. Wow. 87 weeks early, and doctors told my mom I wasn't going to make it. They diagnosed me with cerebral palsy. There are different types of this condition, but I'm not paralyzed, and I can only walk with a walker and with assistance. And life isn't easy, as I go to physical therapy to help with my walking, and it's never easy. In August 2012, my aunt was diagnosed with cancer. She passed away the next month, but also... In August, my uncle unexpectedly passed away due to a heart attack. We were planning to go to WrestleMania 29, so we had to back off those plans because we had back-to-back -back deaths in my family. And then in October, I lost my best friend, my grandfather also, to a heart attack due to stress from the deaths we watched. Uh, well, actually, I'm sorry. Due to the deaths, we watched wrestling, and I miss him terribly. It was a terrible year for my family, but in 2014, I walked across the stage to get my diploma in front of my class. It's something I'll never forget. Every day, I'm in a wheelchair, and some days aren't so great. But in 2008, I went to Orlando for vacation, and a little show called TNA Impact was there. I never watched wrestling up until this point. I heard of WWE, but never watched it. I only had video games. That day, I saw Kurt Angle, AJ Styles, Samoa Joe etc. I became, I became a fan of that day. Uh, I became a fan that day as I watched WWE. I was very young, so I was a Cena mark, LOL. But uh, I grew up and I became interested in the behind the scenes aspect of the business and had logic starting around that time with your reviews. They are entertaining. It keeps me going. We have the same logic towards the product. I also yell with you when we both disagree that WWE is giving, or what WWE is giving us, and I thank you for lifting my spirits. I'm a goon for life. Hashtag Team JD. Thank you again for being one of my heroes. I hope we can get to chat one day and meet you. Uh, wish you nothing but the best. Much love, bro. Follow me on Twitter if you want. Uh, P.S. Your Kevin Dunn impression kills me every time. Shamoa Joe. And Kevin Owens, those uh, those chicken sandwiches, man, they gotta be so good for Kevin Owens, man. You see how fat Kevin Owens is, man. So uh, the Kevin Dunn, man, I, I enjoy doing the Kevin Dunn impression when uh, when it calls for it. Um, I, uh, uh, you know, I'm I'm flattered every time 
somebody wants to say that I'm the hero, man. You know, I, I really don't know how to uh, to respond to that. I, I do what I do because I love doing what I do, man. Um, what you see here is just, uh, you know, when I read these stories, this is this is JD, you know. Uh, what you see in the intro and all the funny shit that I do, it's just an amped up version of who I am. Um, but uh, to think that I am a hero to not only you, to other people, man, it's just, it's still, it's still mind boggling to me and I can't really grasp that fact. You know, I do what I do based out of the love I have, not only for this show, for you guys, but for the business of professional wrestling. Uh, I'm sorry about um, all those unexpected deaths in your family. I know that's not easy to deal with. You know, I've only had, uh, I was too young when my grandmother on my dad's side passed away. She was, she was in her 50s and she died from pancreatic cancer. Uh, but I knew what was going on. I was too young and my parents hid me from, from that. But uh, as I grew up, I realized what had happened. You know, my grandpa was the first real death that I actually went through and had to sit through. And it was, uh, a, a, just a mortifying experience for me. I, I still, uh, I still can't get over the fact uh, that, um, you know, he's gone, and I'm lucky I had a, a great foundation with me that day, um, with Maria, and, uh, and she really helped me through all that, just to see my mom also, you know, my mom tried to remain strong that day, and, uh, when we, um, we left the funeral parlor, she just broke down in the middle of the street, and she just cried, because she realized that her dad wasn't there anymore, and it was just, uh, it, it was just, um, a shitty experience, man. Uh, I don't wish that upon anybody. I know we all have to go through it, but, uh, I'm, you know, yesterday was his birthday. I'm trying to think of uh, of all the good things, you know, and how he used to celebrate his birthday. He used to he, he used to not care, you know. He used to uh, come home from work, and my parents would get him a coconut custard pie because that's what he loved. You know, in his, in his later years, he didn't realize it was his birthday because he was suffering so badly from, from Alzheimer's. He still loved his ice cream cake. You know, he loved, he loved vanilla, uh, and it was, it was just, it was just great, man, to spend birthdays with him, and, uh, you know, I, I miss him so much, and um, I don't mean to, to get off topic from, from the story, but uh, I, I wish you the best, dude, I, I really do, um, I wish you would have seen something else but Impact, uh, to get you interested in the sport, but as long as you're interested in the sport, I guess that's all that matters. Uh, now, apparently, you're watching WWE, and everybody that you mentioned, Angle, Styles, Joe, they're all in WWE, succeeding at at something. And I'm glad that you can listen to me and agree with my logic and get angry with my logic because this is just an open forum, man. You might agree with me, you might disagree with me, and that's the great thing about this show. Uh, I'm glad to have you as a goon for life. Um, I will continue to do my best for you, and hopefully we can meet one day. Uh, if you guys want to follow Trey... On Twitter, he did leave his uh, his Twitter handle. It's Trey, T-R-E-Y, Evans, E-V-A-N-S, Trigger, T-R-I-G-G-A. So that's Trey Evans Trigger on Twitter. Thank you so much, Trey. And uh, Shamoa Joe and Kurt Angle, AJ Styles, he's, a, he's an indie mark, right? AJ Styles. Yeah, you, you guys think AJ Styles and Nakamura at WrestleMania? <laughs> Whatever, man. Uh, Kevin Dunn, go fuck yourself. Anyway, moving on to the next story, man. Thank you so much, Trey. I greatly appreciate that. Uh, we got one from Lenny. Fucking Lenny. Hello, JD. This is Lenny, a.k.a. at the Beast Animal on Twitter. What's up, bro? I met you and Joe at WrestleCon. I also met you and Joe at the Internet Darlings panel. And thank you, JD and Joe, for making my WrestleMania weekend glorious. I was wearing my Roman Reigns Get Off My TV shirt to represent you, JD, because you're the man, bro. Thank you, brother. My number one favorite singer is Christina Grimmie. Can't say the same, bro. Can't say the same, but to each his own. And my all-time dream was to always meet her, and Christina was my idol and my hero and my inspiration. And she was the angel that I would always look up to because she was that inspirational. I take back what I said. If you find inspiration in something, man, that's, that's good on you, bro. To each his own. I always wanted to meet my hero, Christina, until one sad emotional day when news broke that Christina was shot and killed at her concert at a meet and greet 
And when I saw the news break, I cried a deep puddle because my hero and my inspiration died. And it makes me sad and emotional that I will never get to meet my number one favorite singer. That was my hero and inspiration and an angel that I looked up to. Whenever I see your videos on YouTube, they always make me laugh whenever I am sad and emotional. JD, you always touch my heart and you're my hero and the highlight of my day. Thank you for entertaining me and you're my number one favorite YouTuber and my hero and my inspiration. The same way Christina Grimmie was my hero and my inspiration. In the future, when I go to heaven and I see Christina Grimmie for the first time, I'm going to give her the biggest hug and I will not let go. If you could read this email on Off the Script this weekend, it would mean the entire world to me. And if you can't, I understand. Thank you for... For what you do, JD, for giving me the best damn glorious entertaining content, and you will always be number one to me, JD. Thank you so much, Lenny. I, I greatly appreciate that. It was a pleasure and an honor meeting you at the Internet Darlings and at WrestleCon. I had a fucking fantastic time. I hope forward. I look forward, and I hope to do it again next year. And uh, if you're going to be there, brother, you know, come up and say hello, and maybe we can... Uh, Maybe we can have a beer, man. I don't know if you're old enough to grab a beer, but uh, if not, we'll get you a club soda. So thank you so much, man. And, and it means the fucking world to me that you consider me a hero and an inspiration to you. And, you know, I still, like like Trey, uh, I, I still have a hard time, you know, just putting my mind around that, man. So thank you guys so much for, uh, for your love um, with these sub stories, man. I greatly appreciate it. We're going to do one more, man. This is going to come from Lucas or Luke. This is from Luke. This is a short one. Dear JD, my name is Luke, and I am from Sydney, Australia. I am 14 years old, and I have, and I am having a rough time. There have been some rough times over the past couple of months with bullying and all that. I just don't feel like myself, and I am always feeling down. I was scared to open up about this to anyone until last week when I went to my school's counselor. I am getting better with encouragement of my family and friends, but it was you that have really inspired me to get out of my bad habits and enjoy my life. Thank you for everything you've done for everybody. I couldn't have done it without you, and I'm very appreciative for that. You are a massive part of my life because I look up to you like a father figure because my family hasn't been very supportive of anything that I like or do. Thanks again. Also, please call me a goon. P.S. You can read my name on OTS. From Luke. Luke, first and foremost, you are a fucking goon. Number one. Number two. I am sorry to hear about the bullying. Um, I, I I don't know what to say about that because I've never been through that. I honestly don't have any advice for that. It, it sucks that your parents don't uh, don't really support you in anything, man. I, that's that's the that's the one thing that uh, I take away from this. That's very heartbreaking. That your parents don't encourage you from or or, or you know, support you in that way. They've given you encouragement to get better and your friends have given you encouragement to get better, which is great. And I'm glad I can have a piece of that as well and, you know, help you get through tough times and get out of your bad habits. But as far as the bullying goes, man, um, you continue seeing your counselor, man. Uh, continue to talk to him. It's always good to talk to somebody. Uh, I will always be here. If you can find solace and peace in what I do, fantastic, man. Uh, I'm going to continue doing what I what I do for everybody, including you. And uh, that means the world to me that you actually said you look up to me like a father figure. You know, I'm pretty much, I could be, I could be your father. I'm, you know, I'm old enough to be your father. But uh, that really means a lot to me, man. Uh, I'll be here and the Off The Script family will always be here to support you. No matter what, man. No, don't hesitate to ever reach out via email. Just uh, just title it so that I see it and I remember who you are. And if you got any updates on that, man, please let us know on Off The Script. And uh, you'll be fine, man. Just continue talking to your counselor. Continue to be around friends and family. And hopefully your family um, becomes supportive of, of what you do. That's really heartbreaking to hear that, man. But Luke, thank you so much for... Submitting your sub story, man. I greatly appreciate that. And uh, and Lenny and Trey, thank you guys so much for all of that. Sub stories, man. If you guys want to send in your sub stories, JD from NY206 at yahoo.com. Please leave your name, where you're from, and title it appropriately. I know I'm backlogged on so many. If you guys have not had yours read yet, please just resubmit it again, man. So uh, we'll get 
to yours right here on Off The Script. Thank you guys for the for a very good first half of Off The Script. Hope you enjoyed it with the unboxing and the sub-stories and you know, the stories about my grandpa. But now, it's time for the main event, man. We're going to get into news and rumors. We're going to talk about Charlotte and her nude photos being leaked. We're going to talk about Brock Lesnar. And we're going to talk about Shinsuke Nakamura versus John Cena being rumored for WrestleMania 34. Do I like that idea? Or could it be at SummerSlam uh, that John Cena and Shinsuke Nakamura makes more sense? So we'll talk about that right here on Off The Script. As always, before we do that, a message from the broken one, the general. Matt Hart. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Broken Matt Hart. This is JD from New York. Actually, delete to JD from New York. I have cleaned this vessel. Make sure to check out his wondrous show off the script. It's absolutely delightful. Wow. Switch shirts, man. I got the new Get Off My TV hit list. Ooh, it's so nice, man. You guys on iTunes and fucking uh, Podbean are probably like, I don't give a fuck what you're wearing, man. Give me the goddamn news. You know, let's get into the news, man. Let's talk about this Charlotte situation. Uh, Charlotte was hacked. Another name added to the uh, the list, you know, of WWE females that seemingly can't help themselves and photograph themselves in the nude and fucking videotape themselves doing God knows what with uh, ex-WWE general managers. But Charlotte is the latest name added to this list, ever-growing list of women in the WWE. As many of you know, Paige was the most notable name uh, of the online hack a few months ago. Multiple explicit videos and photos of her leaked on the web. The uh, fapocalypse ensued after those videos and photos were leaked. Paige herself confirmed the hack, saying that the photos and videos of her were posted without her consent. Looks like Charlotte Flair might be the next victim of an online hack. The talk on social media on Thursday was that there were photos circulating the web of the talented WWE star. Twitter has shown their support for Charlotte in the situation. I stand with at Miss Charlotte WWE. Some leaked pictures... Do not change the fact that she is the greatest women wrestler of all time. Hashtag Charlotte. Somebody else tweeted, I am shocked for at Miss Charlotte WWE. She has my full, full support. Everybody's asking where you can get the links or the websites for the pictures. I will do no such thing. It's fucking disgusting. It's wrong. It's invading somebody's privacy. I have not even seen the photos. Nor do I care. I, I just don't. Okay, um, we don't know if it's the same hacker that did the page shit. Charlotte confirmed this leak on Twitter. She said from her official Twitter page, private photos of mine were stolen and shared publicly without my consent. These images must be removed from the internet immediately. So to follow up on this story, um, I, I really don't know what's going on with any of this. Um... There hasn't been any other word since this morning. That was tweeted at 10.49 a.m. on May 4th from Charlotte. Since then, I have not heard anything else from any other credible source. I know Ryan Satin posted something on his Twitter. But, um, again, man, you, you got to be careful about what you do. Okay? You got to be careful about what you do. You can't be photographing yourself with an iPhone and storing it in the cloud when you got some fucking... And somebody made a comment to me, well, it's wrong of you, JD, to stereotype these types of people as degenerate virgins. What the fuck are they? What are they? Clearly, if you are aiming to attack celebrity females and trying to expose them for their personal information and their personal videos and photos, all that means to me and all that says to me is that you are a class A virgin. You are a loser at life. You hate your existence. So you have to have your shitty life felt somewhere else. Somebody has to feel your fucking shitty life. You want to ruin somebody else's moment. You want to embarrass somebody at the height of their career, right? It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. 
Be careful about where you store photos. If you look at my phone, there's nothing but fucking cat pictures. Pictures of fucking Hobbs. No, you're not going to find anything. You're not going to find anything on my phone. There's no fucking sexually revealing photos. There's no fucking, uh, no video of me doing whatever, you know? It's, it's stupid. It's stupid. Now, the one, the, the one photo I've seen, I haven't even seen a naked photo. I haven't. And I don't really care to, you know? But some people, I'm hearing through whispers in the grapevine that, you know, you know, the, the, the fucking rumors are coming out and the conspiracies are starting that Charlotte isn't really a female, that she's a transsexual. I'm hearing all this shit. All night, I'm hearing it. I don't care. I don't fucking care. Now, the one photo I seen from Charlotte was her in a sports bra and really, really skimpy underwear. That was the only one that I seen, and that was actually posted on Twitter. But I wouldn't even call that revealing. To me, it looked like Charlotte was admiring herself after a workout and looking at her body and looking at how much muscle mass, mu muscle mass she has on her body. It wasn't anything that bad. Now, I haven't seen the other photos. I haven't seen if there was anything else more revealing. But at this point, why would you be interested? It's, at, at, at this point, it's downright embarrassing. Be careful what you do with your device. You should have learned from the page thing. Do not upload or take photos of anything. If you do, delete it. Delete it. Okay? Simple as that. I'm not going over that again. You got to be careful. You cannot trust anybody. You know? You can't even trust your fucking, your, your close, your close circle. Because they might be out to fucking zing you. They might be out to embarrass you. They'll fucking take a photo, you know? And they'll fucking, next thing you know, they're trying to ruin your fucking reputation. So it's ridiculous. I'm not even going to talk about this anymore. Charlotte, the latest victim of a hack. I do not have the photos. Do not ask me for the photos. If I see you guys posting links to the photos in the comment section, you will be banned. Do not do it. I don't want to see any of it. I don't want that type of fucking bullshit floating around on my channel. This is wrestling news with one of the biggest stars in the company. I have to report it because that's what we do here. Okay, I do not consent of this shit. It's bullshit. Charlotte does not deserve it. And hopefully this is swept under the rug. Will there be repercussions? No, of course not. Nobody else was, re uh, nobody else was uh, punished. Xavier Woods wasn't punished for his up, up, down, down performance. You know, Brad Maddox is no longer with the WWE. Who the fuck cares what he does? Paige is still employed by WWE. She's got bigger things to worry about, like her drunken fucking fiance threatening the COO of the company. While you're still employed in the same Periscope video as him. You got bigger, fi uh, big, bigger fish to worry about, Paige. You know, your uh, debut on Up, Up, Down, Down is the least of your concerns. But still, nobody deserves that. Nobody deserves it. She wasn't punished for that. She'll be punished for other reasons. Charlotte will not be punished. She's too high up the ladder in WWE hierarchy to even be punished. WWE's going to sweep this under the rug. And they'll probably have another pep talk in the back. Conceal your phones. Be responsible with your devices, please. We do not need any more coming out. God forbid there's a Sasha Banks or an Alexa Bliss leak. The Alexa Bliss one was a fraud. Photoshopped. I reported about it anyway. But it was making the rounds. Sasha Banks, forget about it. Alexa and Sasha would break the internet. Literally. God forbid we see it. We don't want to see it. And nor do the WWE Higher-ups want to see it. It is what it is. End it. It's over. Vince McMahon reportedly was not at Payback. We discussed this on Out of Nowhere with Joe Cronin. Many fans have heard the stories about Vince McMahon being a workaholic. Vince McMahon is, himself is, has said in past interviews he only sleeps a few hours at night. It is known that WWE um, and Vince McMahon works a 24-hour-a-day, seven-day-a-week job. That is why it is noteworthy anytime he misses a show, which is apparently what happened this past weekend at Payback. It's being reported by MLW Radio with Court Bauer, 
that Vince McMahon was not at payback in San Jose, California. They didn't know the official reason as to why he was absent other than they had confirmed he wasn't in attendance for the show. They speculated that it could be because of Vince McMahon's dislike of traveling to the West Coast. Regardless of the reason, it is noteworthy that Vince McMahon, or when Vince McMahon misses something, especially a pay-per-view, it is newsworthy. Vince is 71 years old, and it is understandable that he would not want to slow down, or that he would want to slow down a bit. But, um, again, this was a pay-per-view, a uh, B-level pay-per-view with that. It wasn't a dual-branded pay-per-view, so Vince McMahon said, why not? Probably thought the same thing we were fucking thinking. The, the build was terrible. No fucking interest at all. Rush, rush, rush. Put together sloppily. I can miss this one. Come on, Dunn. Let's go get your teeth brushed. Ah. Oh, that sounds like a great idea, Vince. That's the way I'd like to spend my Saturday night. Uh, you know, uh, but what about Samoa Joe, man? What do you think he's doing on a Saturday night? You think he's at Johnny Rockets? With that chili burger? I guarantee you Kevin Owens is sitting right across from him. What about Nakamura? Where is he, man? He's at the dumpling spot, and he wants that nice little soy sauce. Anyway, moving on. Uh, maybe we should have more pay-per-views in uh, California so that Vince McMahon doesn't show up. Because you know what? Payback was actually a good pay-per-view. It was actually a watchable pay-per-view. Vince McMahon wasn't there. No fucking kidding, right? No wonder Payback was so good. Hey, WWE, let's start booking more pay-per-views over uh, on the West Coast, man. San Jose, LA, you know, San Diego. Yeah, you can go up and down the coast to Seattle, maybe, man. Whatever, you know. Vince McMahon doesn't like flying out there. And if the show's going to end up being better without him there, why not? Why not? I think it's a win-win situation. Whatever, man. So, Vince McMahon wasn't at payback. Uh, reason is that he does not like to fly to the West Coast. Whatever the reason is, payback was a decent show. All in all, very good show. Review is on the channel, by the way, if you guys missed any of that. Speaking, speaking of uh, missing a few brain cells, Titus O'Neil brand, or Titus brand, Mr. fucking catering himself, you know, 1-800-1-800-888-TITUS. 800, 800, uh, 888 Whatever. I gotta come up with a fucking phone number for him. That's too many fucking numbers. But you get the point. Titus O'Neil tweets and deletes a photo of Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman together at the Roman Coliseum. What a fucking asshole. Now, when I seen this photo, I swear to God, I, I swear on everything. I looked at this photo for the first time. I seen Braun. I see Heath. I'm looking at it right now. I see Matt Hardy. No wonder, you know, it's fucking coincidental that Matt Hardy's in the middle of all of them doing fucking the wonderful pose, right? And uh, Titus O'Neil deletes this fucking photo right after that with Matt Hardy just sitting right in the middle of all these guys. I see Braun. I see, I see Heath Slater, Matt Hardy, Curtis Axel. And I thought, at first glance, I swear on everything I own, I thought that was Darren Young. I thought that was Darren Young. In fact, it was Roman Reigns. And then we see Titus O'Neil. All standing together, one big happy family in the, in the, the background. You see the Roman, the Roman Coliseum. Uh, the Roman Empire in the Roman Coliseum. Ha 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 ha, I see what you did there, right? Fucking assholes. Um, but the Raw brand is currently in Rome. For an overseas tour, there was a live event. Uh, there, there was a live event on Wednesday in Rome, and some members of the Raw roster went to visit the local scenery that includes the legendary Roman Coliseum. Titus O'Neil. Speaking of the Roman Coliseum, man, one of my favorite movies, man. I was watching it the other day, Gladiator with Russell Crowe. Great fucking movie, man. And Joaquin Phoenix. Great fucking movie. Titus O'Neil posted a photo that has gotten a lot of people talking. And hey, listen. That's what Titus O'Neil does, man. He gets a lot of people talking. Apparently, uh, his green beans are fucking wonderful. You know, Matt Hardy even said it on Twitter. And now, you know, Titus O'Neil's getting people talking with his stupidity. Posted a photo that got a lot of people talking. Titus, Braun Strowman, Heath Slater, Matt Hardy, Curtis Axel, and Roman Reigns are all hanging out. The thing of interest here is that 
Stroman and Roman, who Stroman threw Roman off of a fucking loading dock, strapped to a fucking gurney, a stretcher, then he tipped over the fucking ambulance, the same guy that he crushed the rib cage of with steel steps on Sunday at Payback. Now you're hanging out with him in the Roman Coliseum. I thought Roman was spitting up blood. I thought Roman had a separated shoulder. I thought Roman had cracked ribs. Looks fine to me there. I don't see no bandages on Roman. I thought Braun Strowman, or Braun Strowman, was diagnosed with a torn rotator cuff via Kurt Angle. Looks fine to me there. He's got a fucking tank top on, his beard looking majestic as ever with sunglasses and a baseball cap on with camouflage pants. Where the fuck is his, uh, his sling? Are you fucking kidding me with this photo? Now, clearly, clearly, Fans on Twitter seen this, and you know the fucking degenerates on the internet. Bloop. They fucking captured the photo. They screenshot it. Whatever. Soon after that, made rounds. Titus deleted the fucking photo after people called him out for it. You know? And, like I said, it was saved by a number of fucking people. Some fans were not happy at all. They tagged Titus O'Neil and WWE in the same tweet. Hey, Titus O'Neil, WWE. Delete the first pick of this tweet before WWE suspends you for this. Why you gotta show Roman and Braun together? That's a good fucking question. That's a fucking excellent question. So much for suspension of belief. This is all I will think of now next time I see Roman versus Braun. Seconds later, all that was heard by local tourist was, I'm not finished with you. I don't understand why WWE talent, and you know, at first I didn't really think much of this because I thought that was Darren Young, but then I realized it was Roman Reigns. And if you guys seen the photo, you guys know what I'm talking about. I swear to God, from, from this distance, it looks like Darren Young. I swear to God. That's the first guy I thought of because I didn't think WWE would be that stupid or none of these guys would be that stupid or Titus O'Neil would be that stupid. Yeah, let me post a picture of Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman. The hottest fucking feud on Monday Night Raw. Guys who are going to be off fucking television, right? And all WWE does is hashtag this and hashtag that. Social media impressions. When one of your stars, whether he's in catering or not, posts this, it's going to make the rounds from... One fan, to two fans, to four fans, it's going to multiply, and then it's going to be picked up by a fucking dirt sheet. And then next thing you know, Dave Meltzer's going to be reporting it. This is ridiculous. Kayfabe broken. Absolutely ridiculous. Why would anybody have the same impression of your hottest feud now when they see Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns standing in the same picture together? I mean, Roman was fucking almost killed by this man, and now he's photographed in the same picture uh, in a friendly manner. All because it's the Roman Coliseum. Are you fucking kidding me? Have some goddamn fucking respect for the business. I don't care where you are. Have some respect for your job. Give people a reason to believe you're hurt. Yeah, Roman looks really fucking hurt. He's all smiles. He's got a nice little fucking tan going on. He's holding a bottle of water. Braun Strowman's over there smiling. Absolutely fucking ridiculous, man. Absolutely ridiculous. This is why the internet, some people really just fucking loathe wrestling because of what the internet has done to it. There you go. Titus O'Neil. He, he, clearly, if there was a goon of the month, Titus O'Neil is goon of the month. Right there. Anyway, moving on. Undertaker. Update on his surgery here. Undertaker is retired. We all know that. Lost to Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 33. He left his gear in the middle of the ring as a symbol that he is done. And The Undertaker has likely wrestled his final match in WWE. One of the things that was rumored about The Undertaker was that he needed hip surgery and was waiting until he retired to get the procedures done. Now, the sun.co.uk. I don't know if that's the same one I reported about the Alexa Bliss nudes last week, but they are reporting that The Undertaker was at David H. Koch Pavilion Hospital for surgery this week. 
Now, the hospital is located in New York and is ranked by usnews.com as being the top in the United States for ortho orthopedics and second for rheumatology. It is unclear as of right now if you will need only one surgery or will be getting multiple procedures done. The Undertaker has been wrestling for over 30 years and has racked up the miles on his body. We wish the Undertaker well in his recovery and can only hope this leads to a much more comfortable life for him moving forward. Uh, Undertaker should be in a fantastic place when he gets everything taken care of. And if I hear anything else on The Undertaker, I will let you guys know right here on Off The Script. Good on The Undertaker for finally getting himself fixed. That's the most important thing, man. He's given his life to WWE. Now it's time for The Undertaker to worry about The Undertaker. It's time to worry about Mark Calloway. Worry about getting yourself fixed and live your life with your wife. Happy, retired, enjoy your fucking time away, enjoy the money that you made, enjoy your kids, watch them grow up. That is all that matters right now. You gave your body to us, now we have to respect your decision to walk away. No more than that, man. Thank you to The Undertaker. Moving on here, man, we got news on, uh, on Monday Night Raw and SmackDown ratings. Now, this does not shock me. Monday Night Raw, this week's episode of Raw featured a, and if you guys see my review, a fantastic triple threat match with The Miz, Finn Balor, and Seth Rollins. It also featured the fallout from Payback, which was, wasn't really all that well built up leading into the show, so a lot of people really didn't care about it. They enjoyed the show for what it was, because it, it was a good wrestling show, but we didn't care. And that took place on Sunday night. So usually after the pay-per-view, you know, you see viewership take a little, of a little bit of a bump up after a pay-per-view. Now, according to showbuzzdaily.com, this week's episode of Raw drew 2.87 million viewers. This is down from last week's episode that drew 3.007 million viewers. The, the number has been declining each week since the Raw after WrestleMania that drew 3.767 million viewers. This is how the hourly breakdown went. Raw went from hour one, 2.9. Hour two, 3.03. .03, and then hour three went from 3.03. .03, and hour three went to 2.64. Now, if they eliminated that third hour, Raw would be sitting pretty. Raw would have a, Raw would have a decent rating. But being that you went from 3.03 .03 to 2.649, that's a lot of fucking people lost, man. It's not good for WWE. Also, you know, I don't want to use this as an excuse, but this is probably the most logical reason as to why the numbers took a big bump, especially at that third hour, that 10 o'clock hour, right in the climax of the fucking basketball playoffs. The NBA playoffs that night. Uh, probably did massive fucking numbers on ESPN or TNT or TBS, wherever the fuck they're showing it. So, uh, you know, this is just a, a period WWE is going to have to get through. You know, you got the NBA playoffs, you got the NHL playoffs, and that's it. Same thing comes in, 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 in September and in October and November, December, January, when football season's there. Monday nights, all from Monday Night Football. When you got October coming around, you got Monday Night Football and the MLB playoffs. It's something WWE is never going to escape. No matter if they put on the best show of their fucking lives, would you have uh, been able to bump up those ratings, man? It, it doesn't matter. When the NBA is doing like 18 point something million viewers, you know, it, it's tough to fucking beat anything or, or chop away at that. You know, but WWE, this is the same thing we say every week. Three hours is killing the goddamn fucking show. That third hour is always detrimental to their overall rating. Nobody wants to watch three hours of wrestling. Two is the sweet spot. That's why SmackDown's so great. It wasn't really all that good this week, but normally, two hours is the sweet spot. One is too short. A lot of you guys think NXT is too short for one hour. I like NXT at one hour. It's what we used to do watching WWE superstars growing up. It was only one hour, you know? Raw was only, I don't know, I think Raw was one hour when it first came on the air, and then they bumped it to two hours. You know, two hours is the sweet spot. Three hours is just way too much, man. Especially with the minds in WWE Creative now, they don't have minds there to book three hours of fucking show. I guarantee if you if you gave these guys two hours, this show would be, you know, it would be 
go, it would go from decent to actually very good. I guarantee you. And WWE on this current Monday Night Raw this past week, they didn't do anything outside of that women's segment, right? And then that main event. You can't build a three-hour show around nothing and then expect us to stay around and be awake for a main event. One match on a three-hour show that's worth anything is not going to gravitate people to your show. It's not going to grab viewers from other places. So, you got to do a better job at building your fucking show. Give me a, a decent main event at the top of the hour at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and then close with something great. Come on, man. Get with the fucking program. But I can't wait for WWE to go back three hours, man. That third hour is detrimental to their ratings, and they know it, and I just don't understand why they don't do it. But according to JBL, they make the most revenue in that third hour. They make the most revenue in that third hour. That third hour pays for 205 Live. Sure. Sure fuck out of here, right? The cruise waits to get one full hour on Monday Night Raw, right? Fucking retard. Anyway, um, SmackDown's ratings, if I can fucking find them, I thought I had them. Apparently, they disappeared from my fucking notes. Are you fucking kidding me? What happened to the SmackDown rate? Oh, here we go. I thought I lost it. Anyway. Um, SmackDown Live. Kevin Owens versus Chris Jericho rematch for the US title from Payback. Jinder Mahal versus uh, Miss, Mr. Uber, Sami Zayn, and then a tag team match in the women's division. Um, that was the main focus of SmackDown. According to the same site, Showbuzz Daily, SmackDown drew 2.3 million viewers. This is down from last week's show of 2.493 million viewers. Still a decline, but not as large as Monday Night Raw. It's just a poor week for Monday Night Raw and SmackDown altogether. There's no interest in the product right now because the creative writing sucks. The storylines suck, okay? They don't know what the fuck they're doing. The Superstar Shake-Up was meant to rejuvenate, uh, you know, rejuvenate and revitalize the fucking rosters and the feuds and the shows. It's done nothing. It's done nothing. So I don't know what's going on. Hopefully they pick it back up next week. That's all we can say. Hopefully WWE gets back on the right track next week for both Raw and and SmackDown. What else can I say about it? I don't know. Sean Waltman. X-Pac. Mr. DX. Over the past few days, people were concerned about X-Pac, Sean Waltman, after he missed an independent wrestling event in the United Kingdom. TMZ Sports reported early on Tuesday morning that he was arrested for possession of weed and meth. His bail was set at $35,000 and he was released. According to a new report from Mike Johnson of PW Insider, there is more information on Sean Waltman. According to the report, Waltman was charged with five counts of possession of narcotics intended for sale at the LAX airport. He was flagged by customs and a drug dog found a number of things in his bag. With the amount of money and drugs on Waltman at the time, the police came to the conclusion that he had intent to sell since he was scheduled to return a few days later. So, Waltman on Twitter tried to clear the air, and I haven't listened to his show yet, but I, I believe he was on uh, a podcast with Ryan Satin, and he did live with TMZ Sports as they reported this. He said that he did not relapse. I've had a crazy weekend, he says on Twitter. I'll get into it on the show Wednesday. Way too much to tweet about. Still mentally strong and healthy. No relapse. Update on this, Waltman tweeted that yeast cleanse capsules were to blame and he's waiting on the lab results. He tweets, we'll have to wait for the lab results to come back on my yeast cleanse capsules. In the meantime, I understand people's reasoning for doubt. There will also be hair follicle tests and polygraph coming. So that's the latest on Sean Waltman. All I will say is this. All I will say is this. Every time I've heard Sean Waltman on Jim Ross's podcast and on uh, on Stone Cold's podcast or Jericho's podcast or whatever he's doing. He's doing his own show now, okay? Which, he's in the limelight, and I believe he has a fairly popular podcast now, right? He's still being booked independently. He's still doing his thing. Instead of nailing him for a relapse almost immediately because that's what people want to do 
because that's the first thing they'll think of. Oh, X-Pac, you know, he's clean and he's back on the fucking drugs again. He, he fell off the wagon, right? Instead of doubting him, why don't we give him the benefit of the doubt until something really comes up? I mean, the guy is going on social media publicly and on his podcast to say, listen, I had yeast cleansing drugs. They were not what you thought it was. I did not relapse. I'm not doing drugs. I'm mentally clean and healthy. He said this on TMZ. He said this with Ryan Satin. He said it on Twitter. He said it on his own fucking show. Give the man the benefit of the doubt until proven guilty. Then we can rip into him. Because at that point, he would have been a liar. Give him the benefit of the doubt. Why do we automatically have to think the bad when it comes to an ex-wrestler who had past drug problems? Give him some fucking time to clear the air. If he's telling the truth, thank God, good on him. If he's lying, then you can attack him and call bullshit. Leave it as is. It's a dead story now until the lab results and the hair follicle that he added is going to come back and produce results. That's it. Give him the benefit of the doubt. Oh, well, J.D., well, what about Ginger Mahal, man? You, you, you think he's doing steroids, man? Well, uh, that's a different story. You know, you can look at Ginger Mahal and tell he's on something. I, I mean, and I don't need Ginger Mahal to come out and pronounce, oh, I'm clean and I'm dieting and I'm working out fucking 19 hours a day. No. We know what you look like before and we know what you look like three weeks after that previous look. Nobody grows veins on top of veins on top of veins unless you go into a fucking science lab and come out with the fucking T-virus flowing through you, bro. I mean, give me a break. Give me a fucking break. Unless this guy went to Raccoon City and injected himself with some fucking unknown virus, you ain't pulling a fucking with the wool over my eyes, bro. Come on. That's a different story. Let's give Xbox the benefit. Let's give Xbox the benefit of the doubt here. He got caught. Sucks that he had to go to jail with $3,500 bond. Bail him out. But hopefully this all proves to be one big miscommunication. Will he get that $35,000 back until, uh, you know, the lab results come back? If he's proven innocent here, will he get that money back? I hope so. It's a lot of fucking money, man. It's a lot of fucking money to be bailing somebody out. So hopefully he gets that money back and he pays back whomever bailed him out. Shitty situation for Sean Waltman, X-Pac. Brock Lesnar, backstage run on his, uh, backstage news on his Universal title run. One of the biggest questions that fans had after payback was, where the fuck was Brock Lesnar? The Beast Incarnate did not defend the Universal title at the event and it doesn't look like he will be appearing on Monday Night Raw anytime soon. This was expected by a lot of fans with a part-time champion, but the plan right now moving forward for Brock Lesnar on Raw is this. According to Dave Meltzer and the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, after being asked by his co-host Brian Alvarez where Brock Lesnar is, Meltzer says that his first match will probably, keyword there, probably, not confirmed, probably, be in July at Great Balls of Fire! Can you imagine Paul Heyman cutting a promo, reiterating Great Balls of Fire? Can you imagine Samoa Joe just yelling out, Rollins! I'll see you at Great Balls of Fire! You know, it's ridiculous. It's fucking ridiculous. Why don't we have King of the Ring, man? Gotta be in the midst of dementia. Gotta be. I, I, I just don't believe that WWE can be this cheesy. I really don't. That is ridiculous. WWE could use Brock Lesnar in some capacity in June for Extreme Rules, but as of right now, it is looking like his first match won't be until July. Should also be noted that the American Airlines Center is promoting great balls of fire as Brock Lesnar defending his title for the very first time since WrestleMania. 
Meltzer does say that Brock is expected to be around much more than he was during his previous title reign back in 2014. In case you forgot, Brock won the title at SummerSlam that year against John Cena. He only wrestled two matches in seven months before losing the title at WrestleMania 31 to Seth Rollins in what was a great main event with Roman Reigns. It will be interesting to see what happens until July. It does look like WWE will continue to build up the Intercontinental title as they should. And other feuds going forward. Seems like Roman Reigns versus Braun Strowman will again be the focal point of WWE Raw. Well, if it's going to be against Braun Strowman, I mean, that would mean Braun Strowman has to win his match against Roman Reigns, right? Because if Extreme Rules is taking place in June... And then Braun Strowman's going to be one of the challenge Brock Lesnar in July. Why would Braun Strowman lose any time before that, before he gets to Brock Lesnar? Doesn't make any sense. So if WWE is willing to sacrifice Roman Reigns for the sake of fucking storytelling here, that should be done. That's what needed. That's what needs to be done here. And if WWE doesn't do that, they're uh, mental. Just like the people who came up with this fucking pay-per-view name. Great Balls of Fire. I don't like that Brock Lesnar is the champion. I, I personally, I don't mind it, but I don't like it. Because there's a lot of talent on Monday Night Raw now that could be challenging for a Universal Championship. Samoa Joe, Seth Rollins, Finn Balor, you know? Those, those guys. Jeff Hardy, if they want to break him away. And Matt does become broken. I feel like at this point, you know, in 2014, it was right. It was the right time for Lesnar. After what he did with The Undertaker at WrestleMania 30, it was the right time for Lesnar to hold the title that long. There's a time and a place for it to happen. That was perfect. In 2017, I don't think it's anywhere near that. In my honest opinion and in my eyes, I feel like Lesnar is holding the title captive. I feel like he's holding the title hostage right now and keeping it from everybody. But my feelings on that could be swayed a little bit if WWE does continue to push the Intercontinental title as the number one title on the show in his absence. And they need to continue doing that. We started great. We started great on Monday with that fantastic triple threat match with Balor uh, Miz and Rollins, I think the wrong man won. I don't want to see a Dean Ambrose versus Miz Intercontinental Championship. I don't see that main eventing pay-per-views anytime soon. I don't see that main eventing Raws anytime soon. But it is what it is. I would have had Seth Rollins win that match, to be perfectly honest with you. I would have had Seth Rollins battle Dean Ambrose. But Rollins and Joe are not done yet. No way are they done yet. Even if, you put, even if you put Finn Balor in that spot, challenging for the IC title, you know, what do you do with Bray Wyatt? You know, what do you do with Bray Wyatt? So, you look at the landscape. WWE probably did the right thing here. Ambrose with The Miz, Balor with Wyatt, Joe with Rollins. You got your Extreme Rules lineup right there. You know, but I think Brock Lesnar right now is holding the title captive. And if WWE continues to push the IC title, I think things will be okay. We'll... we'll We'll be thinking about it, but it won't be pronounced. I just hope that they continue pushing the IC title because the IC title certainly needs it and it certainly deserves it, okay? What else do I got here, man? We went over Charlotte. We went over Brock Lesnar, Sean Waltman, The Ratings, The Undertaker, Titus O'Neil. Um, we're going to end with this. What? How far am I into this thing? 38 minutes. It's good enough for you guys. Uh, there's not a lot of news. There, there really is not a lot of news as far as, as wrestling goes, man, there's not. It's just a dead period. And it's going to suffer, you know? Podcasts are going to suffer. There's only so much you can talk about. This is a big story, though. We're going to end with this. You guys know my feeling on Shinsuke Nakamura. I think Shinsuke Nakamura is being booked perfectly right now on SmackDown Live. You do not want to overexpose him. You need to treat him like a special attraction, which they have done, okay? We probably won't see him this coming Tuesday. We'll probably see him on the go-home show, and that's it. And then he'll debut on SmackDown against Dolph Ziggler in Chicago at Backlash. Fine. Fine. I think they're doing a very, very good job at booking Shinsuke Nakamura right now. 
John Cena is and will always be the number one guy in WWE until he finally steps away. He did this with Kevin Owens. He did this with, a- he did this with AJ Styles. He's going to do the same thing again this year with Shinsuke Nakamura. Now, there's rumors going around that John Cena and Shinsuke Nakamura are headed for a match at WrestleMania 34. That's what the report is going to say. I'll read it to you in a bit. That's the wrong way to go about it. That really is. I think Cena could be safe for something else at WrestleMania. Everybody wants to see AJ versus Nakamura at WrestleMania for the WWE Championship. That's the match. That's the match you need to build WrestleMania around. I don't care what anybody says. Fuck you if you think, oh, well, fuck that. It's Indie Darlings, Indie Marks. It's the only. It's the match the Indie Marks want. It's not WrestleMania worthy. You're bullshitting yourself and you're fucking kidding yourself, bro, if you don't think that Nakamura and AJ is WrestleMania worthy. People still talk about their match at Wrestle Kingdom 10 because of how great it was, and people are dying to see a rematch. My plan for Nakamura is to continue booking him up the way they are or building him up and booking him the way that they are. AJ is going to be, as soon as he gets done with this United States Championship picture, AJ will be thrusted back into the World Championship picture. Before you know it, Randy Orton will have gone through Jinder Mahal and maybe a, I don't know, a Baron Corbin. That's been rumored. Maybe we get Jinder twice. I don't know. But AJ Styles is headed for a WWE Championship match against Randy Orton at SummerSlam. That's my prediction. That's the way I see WWE booking this. Randy Orton is is boring as a fucking... Jesus Christ, I'm trying to think of a great analogy. Randy Orton is as boring as a... fucking original, plain-flavored rice cake. That's how boring Randy Orton is. He's boring. As a babyface and as a champion leading SmackDown, Randy Orton is boring. I don't mean that in a negative way to take away from what he does in the ring. What he does in the ring is fucking fantastic. Randy Orton's one of the best they got. But he's boring. Nobody wants to see Randy Orton in the position he's in. He was great with the Wyatt family. He was great under Bray Wyatt. He was great in that calculating Viper role, trying to kill the Wyatt family from within as he teamed with Bray and Luke Harper. That's, that Randy Orton really interested me. AJ Styles will win the WWE Championship from Randy Orton before the end of the year. AJ Styles will be the champion going into 2018. Mark my words. Because the fans want it. He clearly has turned from babyface or from heel to babyface. The transformation is complete. Okay. AJ is no longer a heel because they chant AJ Styles in unison everywhere he goes. He's one of the most popular athletes on the roster. AJ will be WWE champion before the end of the year. He will lead SmackDown into 2018 as its flag bearer. Trust me. People want it, and WWE is just waiting for the right time to put him back in that spot. Nakamura, at that point, is going to need something to do. Nakamura may be the most over WWE superstar on both brands. And if you don't believe me, just watch Backlash when he comes out and makes his intro. It's going to happen, and you will see it. Nakamura is going to go through the same steps that Kevin Owens did. He's going to go through the same steps that AJ Styles did. But this year, it's going to be different. Nakamura will not be losing any matches on SmackDown. John Cena will be back. I am predicting. I'm not saying this is confirmed. I am predicting John Cena will be back this summer. John Cena will be back by Money in the Bank, which I believe takes place in uh, in July. Okay? Great Balls of Fire in July for Raw. Money in the Bank in July for SmackDown. John Cena will be back, and he will challenge Shinsuke Nakamura because that's what John Cena is going to do. John Cena is the number one guy on SmackDown, and you know John Cena's got to get in the face of the new guy who is the most over on the brand, and that is Shinsuke Nakamura. In some sense, it's a dream match. In some sense, it's one of the biggest matches WWE can do for SmackDown. I say we get John Cena versus Shinsuke Nakamura at Money in the Bank, 
Nakamura wins. And in a passing of the torch moment at SummerSlam, Nakamura and John Cena again, one-on-one -on -one in the co-main event in Brooklyn with Nakamura winning again. And that could be one of the very last matches that we see John Cena in. That's what I'm predicting. From there on out, Shinsuke Nakamura will feud with whomever they decide to put him up against. He will remain undefeated. He will win the Royal Rumble. And he will go on to WrestleMania and challenge for the WWE Championship. That's my prediction. Because if WWE's plan right now is for Brock Lesnar to hold the title, the Universal title, till WrestleMania... That only means Roman Reigns might be slated to win the Royal Rumble. And God forbid they come to a decision like that. Fuck that. You want to book Reigns and Lesnar? Book it elsewhere. I say Shinsuke wins the Royal Rumble. Shinsuke versus AJ for the WWE title at WrestleMania. That is the way to go about it. Mark my words. John Cena is currently on hiatus from WWE due to commitments for Hollywood. But his WWE return have been confirmed only a month removed from WrestleMania 33. The last time the WWE Universe saw John Cena, he got engaged to Nikki Bella on the grandest stage of them all after winning a mixed tag team match against Maurice and The Miz. It was a genuinely happy moment for him to leave WWE fans with for a while. However, he is currently on another hiatus to film a new movie, but he left without there being a confirmed return date. The expectation is Cena would be back on WWE television in a few months, and his return to WWE is bound to happen before SummerSlam in August. But WWE fans have been speculating about how long he will be kept off television. The latest update on his status was nothing more than speculation. In his absence, Shinsuke Nakamura has emerged as the one to fill John Cena's spot on SmackDown Live. WWE officials are being hesitant about how they use Nakamura on television. He is not even set to wrestle a match on screen until backlash against his rumored opponent, Dolph Ziggler. However, Nakamura won't have to carry the load on his own for much longer because WWE um, has finally a timetable set for John Cena's return. The rumored time frame around, or the rumored time frame rather, after WrestleMania for Cena's return was Money in the Bank in June. I'm sorry, I correct myself. It's in June. It's now being confirmed that Cena will return before the pay-per-view and the exact date of his return will likely be announced at Backlash. There is some speculation regarding his next rivalry, rivalry once Cena is back on television, but the expectation is that he'll be involved in the Money in the Bank ladder match. It has been reported that Baron Corbin is the current frontrunner to walk out of St. Louis with the Money in the Bank briefcase at the pay-per-view, which I've been predicting since November of last year. Now, that's my prediction. For the Money in the Bank briefcase, but what about Cena? Nothing is confirmed, but it's unlikely that John Cena will win the briefcase himself if he's included in that match. However, his next feud will likely come out of that match. Until this report, it wasn't clear when he would return to WWE. Creative plans for Cena haven't been a very hot topic over the last month. There are only two ways WWE officials are likely to use him. Some people are assuming that Cena will be back with the company through SummerSlam before taking off again for another project in Hollywood or outside WWE. There is no question he will work some big matches, but he will either be challenging for the WWE Championship to break Ric Flair's record, or he'll be working with a young talent. There has been some speculation about Cena facing Shinsuke Nakamura at WrestleMania 34 in New Orleans. That is a potentially huge match, which is a year away. But that means it's unlikely that WWE officials are planning Cena versus Nakamura for SummerSlam this year. The original plan was for Cena to have a huge rivalry with Samoa Joe after his hiatus, but Joe was on Raw. And that can't happen because Joe was on Raw and John is on SmackDown Live. It's possible that Cena could feud with Baron Corbin after he wins the Money in the Bank contract. He could also feud with Jinder Mahal, who's being pushed as a strong mid-card heel now that WWE is looking to expand into India. There's a lot of value in a feud between Cena and Mahal, especially now that the fans have lightened up to Cena and they consider Mahal an outsider who they deem against the USA. No matter what he's doing, John Cena will be welcomed back with open arms. Um, If Cena is going to go up against Corbin, I don't see Corbin winning that match. 
I think I, I think that's not good for Corbin. I don't see Mahal beating Cena. And if Cena is to go into SummerSlam against Shinsuke Nakamura, you got to have him have some momentum underneath him. He, he, he can't be losing to Baron Corbin, and he can't be losing to Jinder Mahal. And those guys are guys you want to build up. I say do the same thing you did with AJ. Follow the blueprint of what we did with AJ. You had AJ at Money in the Bank. You had that, that little toss-up in between, right? You had that six-man tag where AJ was with the club and Cena was with Enzo and Cass. Cena got his win back in that tag team match by pinning AJ Styles. And then AJ and Cena had one of the best matches of the year at SummerSlam. You do the same thing with Cena and Nakamura. Cena and Nakamura at Money in the Bank in June. You go through all of June, July, up until the end of August. You give us Nakamura and Cena too. Nakamura beats Cena both times. There is no split decision here. There's no 50-50 booking here. Cena is going away. Nakamura is the man on SmackDown that you want to push towards a monumental match with AJ Styles for the WWE Championship. All signs point to Nakamura and Cena. All signs point to Nakamura beating John Cena and taking his spot on SmackDown Live. And that is the way it should be. And that is off the script. Thank you guys so much for viewing and listening, wherever you might be listening to Off the Script. This is episode 168 right here on YouTube.com. Thank you guys for everything. Thank you for supporting Patreon, patreon.com slash JD from NY206. Thank you guys for supporting my friends over at Audible, audibletrial.com slash off the script. Barbershop window for your t-shirts, bro. Barbershopwindow.com slash off the script. And as always, Loot Crate. Thank you to my friends over at Loot Crate. Try LootCrate.com slash off the script. Coupon code JD from NY for 10% off. Follow me on Twitter at JD from NY206. Hit that subscribe button and that bell for your notifications. And I am JD. This is off the script. Hit that thumbs up, and I'll see you guys right back here for Saturday's edition of part two of the number one fucking podcast right here on YouTube.com. This is off the script. Have a great Friday, and I'll talk to you guys later.